New York, Stonewall Inn, 1969, the birthplace of today's pride parades, where the LGBT plus community takes to the streets to fight prejudice and exclusion. Pride bedeutet für mich Sichtbarkeit der Community. Pride ist für uns auf jeden Fall immer politisch. In 2020, COVID made Pride street parades nearly impossible, with the community dramatically losing visibility and impact. If we can't take it to the streets, we'll take it to the sheets. Supported by CSD Germany, Instagram, and ProSieben, Gay Pride became Stay Pride. The idea, to demonstrate from the safety of your beds. Inspired by the iconic bed-ins for peace, we called for a global bed-in for pride. And we were heard. On June 27th, Instagram turned into a global virtual pride demonstration out of bed. Starting in Germany, running through the entire season, activists all over the world went to bed with loads of creativity. Even a limited bed linen collection went on sale. Stay Pride was so much more than just a pride alternative. Every picture and story posted from the bed was both a protest participation and a call for protest. No one should be jailed for being gay. The greatest gift is to be you. The reach and impact of the campaign increased exponentially over only two months, proven by an interaction rate of 400% above Instagram average and a reach over 8 million, with a budget of just 2,500 euros. Of us! <laughs> Thanks to all supporters, partners, makers, dreamers, trailblazers, fighters, and believers. Thank you for reimagining Pride. Kein Problem, Schätzchen. Küsschen. Firstly, we need to be agile and fast. When COVID hit, this case happened and it needed to happen super fast. Secondly, you need to be culturally savvy. This case couldn't have been done without a deep understanding of the LGBT plus community and some of its dynamics, the importance of the street parades, not just to gain visibility, but also, for instance, to gain donations. All the more important to act and find the bed in for, for pride as an alternative. And then thirdly, it also shows that commerce can be, should be everywhere. This is a topic that easily could just be cause marketing or purpose-driven marketing, but I think it's interesting how you merged in commerce by finding that startup, you know, the maker of the bed linen, uh, the D2C, our e-commerce solution of actually raising donations and actually getting something out there. And then finally, it also proves, as so many cases do, it's great to have an idea, but the making, the making is the thing. You need to make it real. I think in your case, you had to talk to so many different organizers of uh, street parades. It was actually quite challenging. There is no central organization. So now let's get into some of these details. Tell us, you know, how did you identify this purpose, this topic, and this specific angle, and also, what were some of the challenges you faced whilst you were working on it? Uh, Nancy, do you want to say, do you want me to? Oh, please, hit it. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> to, um, like me as a gay man, the um, purpose was always pretty obvious because very early this year, I started to think about, okay, pride parades will not happen, but they have to happen in some capacity. So what can we do? And the idea came in a very simple and obvious way, uh, just thinking, okay, gay pride has to turn into stay pride. And then all the magic happened once I communicated this thought to other people and it got out there and developed into something. So that's probably how it started. That's also the great difficulty that uh, we had to face in the pro uh, process because it's a simple idea, it sounds simple, but as you already said, we had to talk to bazillions of people to like make it work and get the right people aboard and get the right forces and resources. And that was quite a handful. <laughs> Yeah, I think, yeah. and one of the things that I found interesting is, you know, moving from gay pride to stay pride 
is the one thing, but then actually I think the creative leap you made is, you know, so what is it actually going to be? And then this wonderful idea of moving the parade indoor actually into hundreds, thousands of indoors, into beds, and that idea of the bed in, that's I think the, the leap you made. So how did that happen? Pretty obvious to, to go to the bed, but as it happens sometimes with creatives, it was too obvious for me at least to get that idea. So somebody else came up with John Lennon and Yoko Ono and the bed ins for peace. And then we were like, oh, bed ins for peace, like bed ins for pride. Could that be a thing? And then somebody else said, well, everybody has a bed at home and they have to stay home anyway. So it makes perfect sense. And what then happens is uh, that Franzi and I even found out that the bed ins for peace happened the very same year as Stonewall, so the birth of pride. So it all pretty much fell into place and seemed destined to be. And if I may add um, one, one very important point, Jens, you also um, shared with me was that even if we may be um, a little bit more open nowadays when it comes to the LGBT plus community, it still is strongly connected with, with um, visibility. So if we don't have any parades and show ourselves, yes, we are still here. Um, I think, how did you describe it? It would, it might, you might say, might there be is, problems. How did you say there is pretty much uh, a, a direct correlation between visibility and acceptance. So if we go out there once a year and show ourselves like acceptance is forwarded, if we skip it one year, we can directly feel the effects. I have learned so much during this project about me, about agencies, work, conversations, having conversations with allies. So. Um, let me just say, um, hop on and get into the conversation, make mistakes and learn. Don't be afraid to fail at the beginning. I think this is still very important. I don't know how it is in other countries, but I still have the feeling that in Germany, um, making mistakes is still a little, little bit too stigmatized. So, um, but in order to develop um, a healthy conversation, a fruitful conversation. Uh, you have to talk with the communities, not about them. And um, this is the major difference. Um, so um, a product is not enough anymore when it comes to uh, commerce. Um, and it's not enough anymore to be customer centric. Um, I don't, the customers don't any longer just care about themselves. They want to know what do you do for others, for the planet, um, for the future. So um, basically anything that brings humans closer in this digital modern era will do the trick. And um, taking a stand as a brand and what I learned this year, please, no fake allyship. Uh, someone will definitely find out. <laughs> um, we have seen that online. And yes, get online. Be part of the conversation, um, especially this year. So much has been going on on social media. And please get involved. It's very important. Um, so I also think that um, brands shouldn't focus on creating um, pivotal moments for the buying decision only, but broadening the horizon and opening mindsets of the customers, of the people. I think this is very important for brands and going to be very important. Um, yes. I don't know if I answered the question correctly. <laughs> no, 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 no. There is no right or wrong. It is great, right? Because as I was saying, you um, it's not a one-off. It's a platform. I think, um, you know, parts of the community, some of the organizations will continue it. It's still live and social, still seeing submissions. And early on, we had conversations around just how many different brands and products this could be interesting for to be, be part of this community, part of this movement. So that's still very much uh, a given, right? So we're still basically not just talking about something that was, we're actually still recruiting. Yes. So um, 
I mean, this year have been many topics that arose to the surface and um, a lot more people spoke about them. So um, moving forward is the best thing we can and should do also with this platform we created because you get information firsthand how people feel how many different perceptions you have of one and the same topic and how you can react to include all of them and i think inclusion um, consists of including people and engaging with them the feel of uh, the feeling of belonging connecting and reaching out and all this is the magic what we I especially felt during this uh, project. Um, Jens and I talked about that. Um, I think the first magic happened when uh, Jens, how did you describe it uh, today? Um, when we, when you told me the idea, and uh, we realized we're both on a spectrum. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm the side. I was. I was the silent bee. Um, I never even, if I may, share a little bit more. I have never even thought about uh, coming out because I didn't think I need one because I am just who I am and had the privilege um, that my surroundings accepted me like I am. Family, friends, they, they knew it was like normal to me. But um, I wanted this certain kind of um, content on the platform because we're talking about John Lennon and Yoko Ono sitting in a bed you know, with those, uh, say, how do you say, uh, protest banners. I wanted that, but nobody was posting it. So I said, hey, Jens, let's just create one. I mean, by the way, I'm bi, so let's make use of that. And by the way, I had my coming out. And it was slightly uncomfortable for me, but in a good way. Um, do you know when you feel slightly uncomfortable, but you know it's going into the right di direction and something great is going to come out of it? And it did. I got so much positive reaction from work, from people I didn't know. And this was my perfect moment and the magic that can happen when you actually start talking about it. And I'm very thankful and grateful that I had the opportunity to find that out. Yeah, and I, I mean, I guess, I don't know, how many years have we seen Pride um, parades? It's also been an anniversary. Technically, it would have been an anniversary, right? Um, depending on how you count, that would have been last year or this year. So, um, Counting here from 69, it's 51 years now. See, so you kind of go, well, look, this, you know, the, the, the struggle, um, the visibility is certainly in the last, uh, I don't know, 20 years, as long as I can remember, there's been parades in Germany. Um, and still, it's taken a long time for these topics to become so important as they have in the last, let's say, 12 months, right? So the, the, the boost to topics around diversity and inclusion. In many, com uh, in many companies, in media, uh, had this push. Um, I think it's great. There is a reason, you know, why this campaign also then became our global uh, Pride Month campaign, which is um, cool. But let's go beyond that. Why do you guys think that it's so important to actually focus on these topics and not give up, not kind of stop? Oh, you know, it's been around for 51 years. Surely it must be done now. Well, as we can see, change happens very slowly, talking about 51 years. So change is happening, but it's a slow process. And you can't hop on, hop off just because it is bright, bright season. You have to really commit and continue actively seeking dialogues and um, listen to the network, learn, build structural awareness, knowledge, education, and therefore foster diverse and interdisciplinary inclusive teams when it comes to an agency. So um, you better be uh, commit to it uh, long term. Um, that's what I think is the other perspective. But yes, I think this might be um, a good way for brands and uh, NGOs. And yeah, to 
to come back to like uh, the initial word you raised, uh, the intersection, that's probably like the magical recipe, like every great thing that has ever happened in advertising and communications and brand building happens at intersections when you get people aboard who don't belong there and bring new ideas and perspectives. So that's probably one thing that you could recommend to NGOs and to brands like broaden your focus, don't rely on what has worked in the past, look at the intersections and these uncomfortable places where people who ask questions and get on your nerves because like they bring new stuff that might be very helpful and drive you. Yeah. And obviously, I mean, it's back to the being, we always say, you know, culturally savvy. What does it mean? I think it does mean listening mainly and observing, observing culture, being close to it or, um, and also not running away when you see something that you don't understand, but actually asking, okay, what's going on here? What is really the trigger? What, what am I witnessing? I don't understand. So yeah, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Exactly. <laughs> and what's, what about the traction? I, I think the case is uh, beginning to, to uh, win certain awards, which is great. But then also what's the word in the, in the community? So tell us a little bit about that, the impact. Phenomenal. Um, my personal experience as I was also um, in charge of the community management on the channel and posting, um, we've been in contact with quite a few people because we were actively going out and asking people, hey, do you want to be part of this? Do you want to post a bed in um, because you're uh, part of the community? or you are maybe someone who is interested in the topic and working together. Um, nobody said no. Uh, they were all very interested. We had to explain a little bit what it is about um, because when it comes to ideas, when you think it's simple, sometimes if you don't have just a picture to explain it, it because you need this first picture, um, it's not so simple anymore. Um, so we got better. Um, explaining what we want and we got more results and people where we had such positive feedback, th people thanking us for doing this and posting. I mean, it's still the bed. It's still very private, but so many people participated posting that in and really going in there and there were a lot of colors. So um, yes, uh, we got big influencers also um, joining us. So if you go out there, if you just ask people and if it's for a good cause, they will say yes and follow you. From my end, I'd say thank you for your time, for your time watching this, but also for your time uh, answering some of these questions. And of course, mainly for working on this case and making it real. As I said, you know, making makes the difference. You made it. Thank you so much.